Hey, thanks for watching today. I just wanted to introduce Professor Josh Holbrook. He's from Montreat College up near Asheville. And the reason we're coming to you today about snakes is because it started with my wife Megan stepping on a copperhead in the backyard. Long story made short, I got introduced to Josh and he's written books. He's been on the Discovery Channel, Nat Geo, Weather Channel. He's an expert in herpetology. So I'm gonna pass it off to him to formally introduce himself, but we want to help you guys understand snakes. We know it's a problem here in Charlotte and this area. So Josh, uh, can you tell us a little more about yourself? And Yeah, absolutely. Like Bo was saying, I've uh, gotten the opportunity to uh, educate people and, and, and show people some of the, the cool things about snakes on uh, the Discovery Channel, on the Weather Channel with Nat Geo um, and, uh, and a few other places. And uh, a lot of people know some of the work that I've done if you've ever heard of the pythons in the Everglades and how they're eating all the mammals around there. Uh, that problem. was yeah, yeah, that was originally my research that I did um, back back when I was an uh, undergraduate in college. So uh, since then I've written a couple books on the subject and that sort of thing. And uh, relocated here to North Carolina where, uh, as you well know, Bo, it's a, uh, it's a paradise for copperheads especially. Yeah, it's a, it's a thing that's mostly talked about in small circles but it is definitely wouldn't you say josh a, i wouldn't say an epidemic here but it's it's a it's a problem yeah it's uh and as more and more people move to north carolina you have more and more problems with it uh north carolina uh i i don't know what the current data is for this year um but historically north carolina has been the number one state in the nation for um venomous snake bite and almost all of those are due to copperheads because they like to be in the same places we like to be a lot of the times so. yeah Especially if you decide to garden late at night, like my wife did. <laughs> exactly, yeah. So, uh, especially this time of year, it's a beautiful June night, and it's a balmy, what, 80 degrees and humid out. That They love that uh, that sort of temperature, um, and uh, a lot of us do too, because that's it's finally cooling down a little bit, and we can go outside, um, and this is most often where uh, encounters with snakes are going to happen. Josh came and scoured our property and helped us figure out clean all the things to do cleaning out debris cutting down any kind of overhangs all kinds of stuff that we can do including installing some snake fencing so can you just tell us like things we can do to prevent that situation from happening because snakes yeah. hunt at night right yeah absolutely i think that there are uh, i know there there are two big things uh that you can do and i actually learned these big things from trying to find snakes so <laughs> so as opposed to your problem where maybe you don't want them necessarily in your yard I actually go out and, and look for them and study them and so uh, one of the things that we uh, do when we're looking for snakes out out in the wild is we look for what we call cover and uh, in cover um, when, we're, when we're out in the boonies we're usually looking for things like maybe somebody has an old barn and the tin has fallen off their barn that's sitting around or maybe it's a, a patch of brush, that sort of thing. A lot of snakes don't like to be out in the open. That's usually when we see them, that's, but that's because we can't see them when they're not out in the open, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so when you have cover, when you have uh, maybe old wood laying around, you have old uh, sheets of tin, old pieces Fly of wood, wood plywood or, yeah. laying around, that's gonna provide a place where they're going to feel comfortable. And the more comfortable they are in the area around your house, the more likely they are to be there. Um, that's I, I actually use that sort of to my advantage at my house. I have some old roofing tin that I have stacked up in the corner of my field that I can go under and find a racer, find a copperhead under any given day there. Which Josh likes that. Yeah, that's that's I'm going yeah. for that. Yeah, I'm not yeah, trying yeah. to prevent that. So so cleaning up that cover is is one of the biggest things you can do because uh, you have an you have an open yard and then uh, they're they're not going to be want not going to want to be out and exposed quite as much. The other big thing you can do um, is I install some sort of fencing. So when we're looking for snakes, one of the methods that we'll use is we'll actually use something called a drift fence. Now a drift fence is you have a construction site. I'm sure you've all seen around the construction site. There's black fencing like this tall around it. Uh -huh. It's essentially that stuff we're using. And we set it out so that you have the fence here, the snake's moving along. They'll actually run into the fence and chances are they won't go over it because snakes are honestly lazy. They don't especially like- Especially copperheads, right? Copperheads exactly. Are lazy. Yeah. If you've, uh, we'll see in a little bit, uh, looking at uh, some copperhead or a copperhead rather, and they're, they're, they're a thick snake. They're, they're, they're kind of fat in the middle. Mm -hmm. And so they don't like climbing that much. They can climb, but usually um, 
if they don't have good reason to, they're just going to hit something like a drift fence and they're going to go along it instead of going over it. And okay. so you can use that to your advantage if you have, uh, especially areas like the back of a yard or something like that, where you can, uh, where you can erect even just a small fence to try to exclude them. Something as little as eight, 12 inches is going to do a world of good. And I think you guys have seen the results uh, so far here. So Josh can actually tell you a little bit more about what's, realistic and what you really need to use but i love snake boots i've used them since i was probably about 12 years old when i used to walk around in swamps in south carolina which were full of snakes especially rattlesnakes and copperheads water moccasins i prefer these chippewas they're very affordable um, from what i understand you correct me if i'm wrong they're very protective against snake bites and you know, during the summer, if you're going to be somewhere where you might encounter a snake, the Chippewa is a great way to go. And I also, uh, before I got my first pair of snake boots, I started with these snake chaps, and you just strap them on. They're really easy. Josh, do you think they're effective? But I, I feel like if you're not going to wear the boots, at least maybe wear these if you're concerned and if you feel like you have snakes in the area. Yeah. Um, it you know, it, it might be a little overkill for everyday gar gardening, but that all depends on your, your comfort level. If you're really straight, afraid and it'll give you peace of mind, yeah, that you're not going to get a copperhead that's going to be able to bite through those um, and, and inject venom. So they, they will do the trick as far as that goes. Um, obviously, different people are going to have different comfort level around snakes i'll be working at copperheads in a couple minutes and uh and <laughs> he's wearing uh sandals, and i've got flip-flops so, so but he also it, said he's been bitten twice today right by the black racer so. well yeah i have been bitten <laughs> by the black racer but that's that's the thing i uh i don't worry about getting bitten by the non-venomous ones it's the venomous ones i try to avoid and so far in in my uh not yet that long career i've completely <laughs> avoided uh getting bitten by a venomous snake so that's good and can you tell us on a scale of, um, you know, one to 10, where one being, you know, not so bad, 10 being pretty bad, like 10 being, you know, worst rattlesnake, worst venomous snake mm -hmm. overseas that would actually kill you versus a copperhead that would just make you extremely miserable. Um, you might wish you were dead, but where does, where do the copperheads fall in that scale? Yeah, that's a great question. So copperheads are, uh, I guess on that scale, maybe around a three and a half or a four. So with, with copperheads, you definitely don't want to get bitten. But the good thing about, uh, about copperheads in North Carolina, at least, is, uh, is all the local hospitals stock the anti-venom for copperheads. Mm -hmm. Now, you want to avoid being bitten anyway, because that anti-venom is enormously expensive. Right, but not they, covered by most insurance companies, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, so there's that. Um, or any, and, um, and and so that's uh, that's one reason not to be get uh, get bitten. But yeah, they do have a venom that, uh, if left untreated, is life threatening. Um, but if treated, uh, is survivable. Still going to ruin your day, ruin your month, whatever. Um, so basically, they have venom that's uh, it's called hemotoxic and myotoxic. Big ten dollar words there. But basically, that just means that. It's, it's venom that attacks your tissues and your blood. So it'll cause blood clots. Uh, we actually, uh, a lot of our current blood pressure medication is based off of copperhead venom, oh. believe it or not. But but they'll, they'll cause blood clotting and they'll cause uh, tissue destruction. So I had a friend who was actually bitten on, uh, I think his hand, and he, uh, he did have to get some anti-venom. And then essentially he had to wear a cast for a few weeks um, to sort of hold some of the swelling back while that started to reci uh, uh, recede um, until he was better. So certainly something that's not going to make you a happy camper for a while yeah. um, and, and something it's, it's definitely worth it to be cautious about. And that would be in an adult, right? So a, a child or a small dog, they would be more susceptible to more serious type of injuries or yep absolutely and uh what what we always say I, i've taught uh, many classes on snake uh, venomous snake bite treatment and we always say the best treatment for a venomous sna snake bite is a pair of car keys getting yourself to the hospital what's <laughs> what's what's nice about uh copperheads if you can say there's anything nice about th their venom uh at least is that um it doesn't take effect very quickly so you usually have uh, in the matter of, you know, over 10 minutes, I would say even most times over 15 or 20 minutes before you start to have any, 
sort of uh, significant reaction to that right. happening. So you do have ample time to get to a hospital and start getting treatment. And correct me if I'm wrong, I think you mentioned, or maybe someone else mentioned, that when they, when a copper advises you, they don't fully inject like they would if they were... Um, okay, yeah. There's some, some, maybe there's a myth about that. Or, yeah, uh, so... Um, size, the smaller ones are more poisonous, you know, that whole... Okay, yeah, so uh, I, I, I don't think there's a... Uh, I don't think there's much to the, the, the myth behind... <sighs> younger ones being more venomous or anything like that i whenever we work with them we treat them as if they were about the same as adults and, and that's that mm -hmm. um but uh in terms of when they bite you snakes can actually control whether they inject venom or not and so oftentimes uh what you will get with copperheads is something called a dry bite and that's a, a bite where uh venom costs them a lot of energy a lot of calories to produce mm -hmm. and so oftentimes when they bite they won't inject venom because they they just want you to get away. They want you to leave them alone. And if they can bite without injecting, that's going to save them a lot of energy. Um, once again, they're lazy. Snakes are lazy. Um, it's copperhead rule that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they may exactly. or may not be. Uh... Yeah, that said, that said, <laughs> never take any chances. If you get bitten by a copperhead, don't just sit around and, you know, uh, have a drink and wait to see if you have any reaction. <laughs> I would get to the hospital right away. Um, so that if you do have a reaction, but, uh, I guess my point behind that, uh, would be, um, if you are bitten, there's, there's not necessarily any need to freak out right away. In fact, if you do freak out, that might make the situation worse because that will get your heart pumping. That will get the venom circulating more. Um, mm -hmm. the calmer you can keep yourself when that happens, uh, if that happens, uh, the better. All right. Well, unless there's anything else you want to cover, let's, you guys ready to get some snakes out? I think that's about all I got. We'll get gonna, some critters out and have a look. All right. I'm going <laughs> to move the camera way back there and put on my mac, my uh, micro zoom, my telescoping zoom. So uh, we'll Sounds make a good. change, and he'll grab the snakes. And uh, I've got a GoPro over there if you want to throw that on. And, sure. But, and right. video the whole yeah, removal absolutely. of the car process. We can put it on the end of my snake tongs if you want. We can get right up in that copperhead space. <laughs> <laughs> You guys can handle it. We're going to show you. Sounds good. All right, so I've taken a few steps back. Josh has brought the snakes around, and I'm going to let him lead the way from here on out. And he's right. got a GoPro on just to give you guys some close-up shots. Yeah, so what I did is I brought uh, three of the more common snakes that you're going to see around here uh, in North Carolina, and we're going we're gonna to take them out. I'm going to show you what they look like. I'm going to talk about them just a little bit so that you can get an idea as to what exactly you're dealing with. We're going to save the, uh, the best for last in terms of uh, venomous, so we're going to look at the copperhead last. What we'll look at first is, uh, is your black racer, so let me grab that guy. Now you can see we got them in this lovely pillowcase. This is actually standard uh, equipment for transporting snakes is in these pillowcases because they actually like the cool dark space in there. And he's not happy to see me already. So there is our black racer and you can mm. see that he doesn't like me very much. A lot of people would call this sort of snake aggressive and maybe they would be right. <laughs> Um, he, he's actually, I would call him more defensive because I'm the one that reached into the bag and, uh, and picked him up. But a lot of people uh, see these guys and they think they might be venomous, they might be dangerous. I've had people say, that to, say to me that they, they thought it was a black mamba in their backyard. Um, but really these guys are harmless. Uh, if I can, um, what I can do is, let's see if he, yep, yeah, there he goes. He bit me right there. And no, I'm fine. I'm not, I'm not dying. It's not hurting me. Actually, that guy didn't even break the skin last time uh, or, or that time when he did that. So, uh, but probably doesn't feel good, right? It'll probably scare, scare you or certainly a child. Yeah, or, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. This is not something I wouldn't suggest you go pick up snakes and get bitten by them. But at the same time, a couple pinpricks of blood and that's about it. He's, he's actually, he is a harmless snake. So black racers are extremely, extremely common. These are what most people have complaints uh, of, of snakes are about in a lot of areas because they're out during the middle of the day when a lot of people are out and they are what are, they're one of the few snakes that hunts visually. In other words, they're one of the few snakes that actually goes out and uses their eyesight to try to find things. So that means they're very alert and they know when you're there 
and uh, so oftentimes you find these maybe curled up in a corner and looking very angry, very defensive. Um, really, that's just because you maybe scared them and, and they're, they're trying to get away because of that. They will almost always uh, try to flee if given the opportunity um, to do so. Now, where will you see these? Are these native to Charlotte, North Carolina? Or? Yeah, these are all throughout the eastern United States. So you are going to see racers pretty much everywhere. Um, if you're in the east, certainly if you're uh, if you're in the Charlotte area, they're one of the most common snakes in most of the southeast. Uh, okay. And they're called racers because they are very fast, and so a lot of people find that scary. They're not like a copperhead where they, they move somewhat slowly. These guys can book when they want to. Now, would you like to come up to the camera? Absolutely. And... Uh... <laughs> And so see, we'll do we'll do a little trick with the camera and see if he'll go for my hand over here. Yeah, there view, we go. <laughs> show our viewers. Yeah. So that is uh, I don't know if that's going to focus or not, but yeah, that's our black racer. And once again, he, he's I, I, I'm the one who's who's angering him, right? He, yeah, I'm the he's one waving at you, not me. Yeah, you yeah. I'm I'm waving I'm waving <laughs> my hand in his face. I'm I'm the one who's making him angry. Uh -huh. So if I get bit. I deserve it. <laughs> yeah. But um, but distinct differences between this one and a guard snake or rat snake or the the corn mm -hmm. snake you mentioned. Yeah, so there are two snakes that are going to look basically like this in North Carolina. Um, this this all black uh, with the all black on top, white on the bottom. The rat snakes, the black rat snakes, um, and then uh, this black racer here. Both of them are completely harmless. So if you see an all black snake, especially an all black snake with sort of a thin spindly body like he has, notice how he's not too fat in the middle. He's sort of the same, <laughs> he's going to try to bite me. He's sort of the same thickness all the way through. Um, that's, that's indicative of all our non-venomous snakes here. So, mo so any black snake you see, it's going to be harmless. Might bite you if you try to pick it up, but if you leave it alone, you're going to be fine. But compared to a rat snake, which are very docile, they will not uh, come after you as much like this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, rat snakes are much less um, spry, I guess you could say. Um, so I'm going to have a, a small rat snake out here in a minute, and so okay. we'll see see okay. what the difference is in demeanor between those two, because you can see this guy just wants to bite my face off, which is understandable. <laughs> I, I caught him. I took him out of the wild. If we were to just let him go in Bo's yard here, which he might not uh, appreciate, but he would he would leave everybody alone and he would crawl away. Sometimes this is one of the snakes where they might actually hang out in your yard for a few days because they might be working the same area, uh, the garden, whatever, trying to get frogs, uh, trying to get other stuff to eat. They like lizards too. So thankfully we'll for my neighbors, he that one is going back to Asheville. <laughs> yeah, all these <laughs> ones are going back to Asheville. <laughs> all right, so next I've got to show you the rat snake. And so we'll, we'll take him out. And so, like I said, this is what is often called a red rat snake or a corn snake. But they are very, very close, very closely related to black rat snakes. Um, so we'll take him out. This guy's actually a small and cute little snake here. So this is our corn snake, our red rat snake. And, um, and Bo, you might notice that this looks very similar uh, to the one that you sent me pictures of, except it has more color. So mm -hmm. that one was like gray and black. This one has the red splotches on its back instead of uh, instead of black. And so these are a pretty common one around here as well. These are actually snakes. You can see, first off, he's really docile. I couldn't get him to bite even if even if I wanted to. Um, he's a very docile snake, and most rat snakes are. Um, the other really cool thing about them is they're called rat snakes. They actually eat rats and mice, so they're a very beneficial, uh, useful snake to have around because of that. That's probably for the best, though, because it's they're also very hard to exclude from your living area, even if you have something like a fence. Like, a, f uh, a fence will keep them out uh, partially, but um, these guys also spend a lot of their times in the trees, so they can very easily get over fences um, and, and often do. Um, uh, so uh, Bo, Bo encountered that problem where he found his in, uh, in the yard, and that's probably because it was climbing in a tree and fell into the yard or something like that. Yeah, that was post-installation of the snake fencing. Yeah, yeah so snake fencing won't help with these guys, but they're also harmless too, so that's, that's, benef that, that's good. And I think an important thing Josh pointed out to me when that happened is that these look like 
they can resemble copperheads when they're small. Mm -hmm. But as they age, they turn they turn black, right? So uh, black the, the black rat snakes will, which are going to be your most common. This red rat snake will actually get uh, brighter orange and red oftentimes is if uh, they are crossing a road or crossing your um, or crossing your lawn. They will often be extremely straight, so a perfectly straight line, except they'll have little kinks in them. So a kinked straight line. Uh, is often the way they move for whatever reason. I don't know why that is, but most snakes will will slither, but rat snakes usually do more of a kinked uh, sort of um, millipede type movement to move around. Now, are you able to show the difference between the eyes? I know that yeah. you know, a lot of people will say, you, obviously you don't want to come face to face, eye to eye with a copperhead, yeah. but any pit viper, right, any poison snake has more of a slender... That's that's right. Uh, the the only exception in in the southeast would be the coral snake, which we don't have anywhere near Charlotte, so you don't have to worry about them. But if you look at his eyes there, I don't know if you need to focus right there, but uh, but um, round pupils. And so that's uh, so. Copperheads and timber rattlesnakes will have elliptical shaped pupils. The other thing that I like to look for, um, which is I think the easiest way to tell them apart is just like I showed you with the racer, uh, is that these guys have a body that's that doesn't get terribly fat in the middle. It's basically uh, it's a similar thickness uh, in the front third of its body as in the middle of its body as in the back of its body. And we'll see in a couple minutes with the copperhead how in the middle they're fat, but off to each end they taper off till they have a skinny tail, a skinny neck until you get to the arrow shaped head. So. Yeah, triangular arrow shape, very distinctive, right? Uh, yeah, the, I, although I often tell people not to go by that head shape so much because if you look at, a lot of people yeah. will look at this guy and say, oh, that has an arrow shaped head too. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, but obviously this isn't a venomous snake. So mm -hmm. um, a lot of a lot of the key to identifying them is, is seeing a lot of them. Mm -hmm. uh, just that repetition, anything you practice, you're going to get better at. So. All right. So All right. We'll go ahead and I'm put him put away. I'm going to my snake boots and you can get out the <laughs> copperhead. <laughs> okay. So I've got the copperhead, obviously a little bit more precaution here. I've got it in this uh, this container, and it's actually a mar marked container. It says danger venomous reptiles on it, um, so there's no mistaking. It's not in one of those pillowcases like I have the other snakes where I'm accidentally going to reach down and try to pick it up and, and hurt myself. So I'm going to go ahead and take him out. And I'm going to use these snake tongs here. Grab him. He wants to cooperate. Right there is our northern copperhead. Actually, down here, I guess it's a southern copperhead. Um, but you can look, he looks vastly different from everything else that we've had so far. If you look at the middle of his body, it's fat. This is a this is a chunky snake. And then you can see how different that head is from all the other things. So I mentioned that the other snakes had a arrow shaped head too, but these guys take it to a whole nother level. One cool thing that he's doing that I want you to see here is he's he doesn't like me, obviously. I'm the one who caught him. But as he's uh, he's showing his displeasure, he's wagging his tail. He's rattling his tail. So a lot of people will actually mistake snakes like copperheads and other snakes for rattlesnakes. Just because they rattle their tail doesn't necessarily make them a rattlesnake. Um, and sometimes these guys will even sound like rattlesnakes because they'll rattle their tail in some dry leaves or that sort of thing, and it will sound like a rattle. He actually, uh, I don't know if you can see from there, but at the end of his tail, it's almost a uh, like a, uh, a yellowish, greenish color. And that is actually, as they're young, they're going to use that that's called a, a lure, uh, just like you would use for fishing. And so they'll dangle that in front of their face in hopes that some tasty critter will come along. And when it does come along, they'll bam, bite it, and inject their venom and eat it. That's actually what copperheads have their venom for. It's not for us necessarily, or originally wasn't for us. It was to catch their prey and try to eat them. So um, if... You have one of these, 
And as you can see, really distinctive. Once you look at a copperhead a couple of times and know what it is, you're not going to mistake it for anything else. Once you have one of these, there's a couple things you can do. Now, first, if you really want to go all out, um, they have snake tongs like this. Now you're thinking, that snake tong there is a foot and a half. I'm not picking up a copperhead with that. I wouldn't advise it either. But, uh, you can actually get a pair of snake tongs like this. Um, and actually, they sell them even bigger than this. They sell them up to 48 inches where you can... If you have a lot of copperheads, you can go ahead and pick them up right like that and just safely take them away, move them out of the area. So these are actually a fairly inexpensive way of grabbing and removing these from your property if you have them. These are not the same things as those tongs that you see um, people picking up trash on the side of the road with. Those will not work very well for snakes, um, but these, these are especially designed to be able to grip them um, so that you can use on them. To remove them. The other thing you can do, I'm going to go ahead and put this stuff over here, is if you just have some household items, a trash can for one, and a broom, you can oftentimes control your copperhead problem, or, or well, Maybe not control the problem, but uh, if you find yourself in a tight spot where you've got a copperhead on your deck or patio or something, this can be a really good way to get them away. So let's say you've got your copperhead and he's moving around. You don't want him nearby. He doesn't want to let go of these tongs right now. But you can just take them and now guess what? Yeah, yeah, recycle them. Uh, that would be cruel. But um, <laughs> uh, what's nice is you might notice these trash cans, they have a very smooth wall. Copperheads aren't great climbers. They can't easily climb up this. Now, I wouldn't leave them in there all day um, because he might figure out a way to climb up it. But once you got them in here, I'm going to put this broom down so you can see. You got them in there. Um, you can easily and safely transport this guy. I can pick this up and I can walk down the street. Um, to the nearest creek or, or wherever natural area you think he might have come from and I can just poop, let him go there and I've never had to put myself in danger. Holding this plastic, you're not, you're not in danger because it's nice thick plastic. They're not going to be able to get through that. Um, and, uh, and sweeping them into here uh, is, is not necessarily dangerous. Not any more dangerous than driving in Charlotte at least. <laughs> So yeah, here he is, um, and you can see they, they do have a triangular shaped head, but a lot of other snakes, it can be pretty easy to confuse them, so you don't necessarily want to go off of that, but I would go off overall a very coppery color um, everywhere, like he's, you can see that he's got these sort of what we would call bands on them. The bands are a darker co uh, c copper, between the bands are a lighter copper. If you can see the eyes, he does have those vertical uh, cat eye uh, pupils but I wouldn't go off that either um, a lot of it is really looking and seeing a, a lot of them look at pictures online get to know them uh, so that you can identify them easily the thing I always go off of for any of these uh, we would call them vipers copperheads are a type of viper is that they will have a thick middle of their body his tail tapers off quite a bit too but it's actually pretty pretty fat pretty rotund in the middle um, and as you might imagine, that's a body shape that's good for crawling around on the ground. These guys are not uh, snakes that spend a ton of their time in trees. They occasionally go in trees. Most of the time it's to ca catch uh, cicadas like uh, we're hearing right now. Um, that's actually a time of year when they're out a lot and looking for food. But most of the time they're going to spend it on the ground looking for things like frogs and toads to eat. So special thanks to Professor Josh Holbrook for coming down to Asheville. We appreciate your time. That was very informative. Hopefully you found it informative. If you have any questions, reach out. Josh would be happy to answer any questions as well as I, as much as I can. As long as the snakes aren't around, I'm good to go. So. All right. Thank you, Bill.